guys, my name is Eden Young. I am 18 years old and I am an actor at Oceanside Theatre Company. Previously, I have done Picnic, Man of La Mancha, and we just had to finish Sweet Charity a little bit early due to the coronavirus. I also just did Mamma Mia at the Star Theatre where I played Sophie. I've also helped with a lot of productions doing hair and makeup, so I hope that I can help you learn some techniques that have been helpful for me. The first thing that I do is I like to get all of my products laid out in front of me so I know exactly where everything is. And then the next thing I like to do is moisturize my skin to make sure that I have a good base for all of my makeup. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my moisturizer and gently rub it on my skin all the way down to my neck. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go in with a pore filling and sticky primer because you want your foundation and concealer to really stick to your skin so that when you're dancing and sweating and under those hot lights, nothing really moves around very much. So I'm going to go in with my pore filling and sticky primer. And I like to focus that mostly on my T-zone. So your T-zone is here and here, this little T on your face, because that's where I tend to sweat the most. And my makeup seems to move the most there. And then take what's ever left over on my hands and rub it all over the rest of my face. And on top of my eyes as well, so the eyeshadow has a good place to stick. A lot of the times people like to do their foundation first and then their concealer, but I like to do it concealer first and then foundation because your concealer can tend to be a little bit lighter than your foundation and we don't really want that right now. Um, just because of the stage lights, it might wash you out. So I like to look at my skin and see that I have a few spots on my chin and up on my forehead and under my eyes have dark circles and we don't want those to be seen. So I'm just gonna take a little bit and dab it on those areas. I just like to blend with my finger because it concentrates it more in the spot where I need it. And then once it's a little bit spread out, I'm going to take a brush and just buff it in the rest of the way. If you do have things like rosacea or even uh, acne or freckles or just anything on your skin that you'd like to cover up more, or even if you have um, beard hair or if you need to cover up your eyebrows, um, a color correcting concealer could be really helpful. So if you're trying to counteract redness, then you're gonna to wanna to use a blue, green, or a yellow. If you're trying to cover up some dark circles, you are going to wanna go in with a more yellow concealer just to counteract the color and make it not so noticeable underneath your foundation. Now that my concealer is on and covering a lot of the places that need help, <laughs> I'm going to start with my foundation. When you are doing your foundation, you want to go in with a matte foundation, not a dewy finish because that will make it look like you're sweating on stage and we don't want to look like we're sweating. So I like to use a stick foundation because they tend to be more full coverage. So you use less of it, but it still gives you all the coverage that you need. And you wanna make sure that you bring it all the way down your neck so it doesn't look like you're wearing a mask. And then I'm going to go in with my foundation brush again and just blend it all in. You can always go in with more if you find that you need a little bit more coverage in some places. And when I'm doing um, stage makeup and not street makeup, I like to use a brush instead of a beauty blender, which is 
something like this because when it's a sponge it tends to soak up a lot of the makeup on your skin so I like to use a brush when I'm applying it and then at the end of it kind of go in with a beauty blender and dab off some of the excess and just make it look a little bit smoother now that my foundation is on and I like the coverage I've done my concealer now you want to go in with a matte powder and cover up the whole entire base so all of your skin so that it's all set into place and nothing moves around when you're sweating dancing or touching your face throughout the show so i just like take a big fluffy brush and dust it all over my face all right now that i've set my face with powder i'm going to contour my face Contouring is really important because now that we have foundation and concealer on, we pretty much look very flat. And with the stage lights on us, it will wipe out any features that we have. So we want to keep our cheekbones and our forehead and jaw. Now I am going to contour. And when you contour, you want to use a cool toned brown instead of a warm toned brown, which you would use for bronzer. Cool tone browns make it look more like a shadow rather than a tan. I am going to focus the contour in a three. So I like to go from my widow's peak or the center of my forehead and then draw a three down to my cheekbone and then underneath my jaw. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of it and just focus it like that. And a great way to find where your cheekbone is and where to contour is if you go to this little thing in your ear, it's called a tragus. If you move just to the side of it, you should feel your cheekbone. Or you could just do the classic fishy lips like this. And you'll see where your natural cheekbone is. And then again, just on the jaw. So it looks like we have a jawline and then just touch it up and do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it on this side now and do the same thing with the three, like that. Focus it on the forehead. Find your cheekbone, go right under it. Now that I have done my contour, I'm going to move on to bronzer. With bronzer, you want to use a more orangey toned brown instead of a cool toned brown. This is more warm. It makes it look like you've been out in the sun a little bit, have a tan. When you're working with bronzer, you want to focus it on your forehead right underneath where you'd put your blush on your chin and maybe a little bit on your nose. So it just looks like your skin has some color in it. Now when you're putting on bronzer, you want to start off light because you can always add more bronzer, but it's a lot harder to take it off. So just start off light, and if it's too light, add more. So again, just start right where the sun would hit your face naturally, and that's where bronzer should go. A Little bit on the chin, a little bit on the nose, and again on the other side, just naturally right where the sun would hit your face. Now that we look like we have a little bit more life in our skin, we're just going to add a little bit of pink with blush. Blush is really important so that you don't look flat on stage. It just brings your cheeks out a little bit. When you are working with blush on a day-to-day -day basis, you might not want to put too much so you don't look sunburnt but on stage that doesn't apply you can really never have too much blush you might look a little bit scary in the dressing room but on stage it looks completely natural and I also like to add a little bit of blush on my nose and a little bit on my forehead just so it all looks cohesive Now we're going to move on with highlighting your skin. 
When you are highlighting for street and every day, you tend to go for a more sparkly highlight, but that won't work on stage because the lights will reflect it and make you look really sweaty. And again, we don't want that. So we just wanna use a bone or an ivory color just underneath your eyes, tip of your nose, right here in between your eyebrows, your chin and your cupid's bow to make your face look like it has lift to it. So I'm going to use an eyeshadow to highlight. It's this very top corner color right here. It's very light, but not white. Cause if you use white, that'll add a lot of flashback. So just take a little bit of that and I'm gonna powder everywhere where I said needed to be highlighted. You can also add highlighter right underneath your contour to make it pop a little bit. I am now done with the skin portion of my makeup. And once I'm done with my skin, I like to go ahead and set that with a spray so that nothing moves around while I'm doing my eyes and my lips. You can use any kind of rose water or setting spray. Both work just fine. It just helps blend everything on the skin a little bit. I just sprayed my skin and now I'm going to go in with a beauty blender and just blend everything together. You can also use a beauty blender to lessen any sharp lines or if you put too much blush or bronzer on, this is what you'd want to use to kind of take it away. You wouldn't want to use a makeup wipe because that'll take everything that you've worked so hard on away. You just want to use this and dab it and it'll mute everything a little bit. Now that I have set my skin with setting spray and blended it all in with a beauty blender, I'm gonna start on my eyeshadow. The most basic color you could go with with eyeshadow is browns. It complements everyone's eye color and it's not too bright on stage where you can see, oh, she's wearing blue eyeshadow, does that really fit? Brown is always safe and it's easy and it's pretty much in every eyeshadow palette that you can get. So there's three parts to eyeshadow. There is your crease, which is right where your eye folds in, right there. You wanna put more of a brown in there, a light brown, it's called a transition shade. And then you have your corner where you're gonna wanna put a darker brown and then that same color that we use to highlight our face, that can go on the lid and on the inner corner of your eye. For my transition shade, I'm going to use this brown. It's not too cool, it's not too warm, and that's gonna go right in my crease. I'm gonna start in the outside corner of my eye and move it in right there, and you're gonna to wanna to follow the it's called your brow bone. You're gonna to wanna to follow your brow bone all the way in. And you can dip in as many times as you want, just until you can start to see some color. Now that I'm done with my crease and it has a little bit of definition, I'm going to go ahead and get a darker brown to go right here on the end of my eye to make it look smoky. So I'm going to use this brown right here. It's a little bit warmer. I'm gonna use this brown right here. It's a little bit warmer than what we had in the crease. And that's just gonna go again right there. And the beautiful thing about stage makeup is that you are so far away from the audience most of the time and you're gonna have these big lashes on, but not everything has to be perfect when it comes to eyeshadow. If you're not great at it, that's okay. It takes practice, but don't stress about it because they won't be able to tell from that far away anyway. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a blending brush just to kind of 
smooth all of that together a little bit. And then I'm going to make it a little bit darker using the same brown, just putting more on the brush right in the corner. Okay, and now I'm going to do the lid using that same ivory color right here in the corner. I like to lick my brush. You can spray it with the setting spray, but you just it helps if your brush is a little bit wet on lighter colors to give it more pigment and make it pop. So again, just in that ivory color. And I'm going to just start right here in the inner corner and work my way out and then we filled in the crease with that brown you're gonna go on that bottom side of the crease and just swipe it across your lid just like that to make it brighter and it'll make the crease pop more and then just right here in the right where your tear duct is you're going to want to put one more little pop of that bright white color. Now that everything's on, I think I want to add a little bit of that darker brown to my crease just to add a little bit more dimension. So again, that's this brown, and I'm taking it with a bigger brush this time. And I'm just going to blend it all together like that. And now you're going to do the same thing on the other eye. So you're going to go in with the transition shade in the crease. Then your darker brown on the inner corner. I mean the outer corner, sorry. <laughs> Try to make your eyes as symmetrical as possible. A little bit darker right in the outer corner. Blend it all together. And then the ivory color on the inner part of your lid again. So this eyeshadow is really basic. You can use it for most time periods unless you're doing maybe Suzical where you need bright colors, especially if you're a bird girl or something. But this covers princesses. This is very classic. It doesn't really change throughout the time periods too much. So this is always a great go-to. Now that I'm done with my eyeshadow, I am going to move on to eyeliner. Eyeliner is another thing that really changes throughout the time period, but it also has to do a lot with personal taste and the shape of your eye. Most of the time, in theater or in dance or anything, a lot of people like to do a winged eyeliner. A wing eyeliner is just when you, instead of just doing the eye, you wanna flick it out and it's an upturn of the eyeliner right at the end of your eye to lift up your face and your eye a little bit more and add some darkness to it. For the purpose of this, I like to do a little bit of a smaller wing, but still a wing so that it does lift my eye and give it that dimension. Doing eyeliner, especially with a liquid liner, is very challenging and it's going to take you a few tries to get it right, trust me. But if you're a beginner at eyeliner, you might want to use more of a stick eyeliner because you have so much more control over what you're doing. Liquid is, for more advanced people, and a great in-between is a felt tip. When you start your eyeliner, what I like to do is start right in the inner middle of my inner corner and just follow my lashes the whole way till the end and then stop. I'm gonna go over that a few times to get the line thickness around where I want it, but you wanna leave a little bit of wiggle room for to make it a little bit thicker because you never know what's gonna happen with the wing. So now I have the thickness a little bit where I want it, and I'm going to start on the wing. For the wing, I like to start right at the end of my lashes, right there, and just pull it up just a little bit. And you want to start shorter than where you want to end, because you can always make it longer, but again, you can't 
take it off. It's a much harder. You'll take off all of your eyeshadow. It's a mess. <laughs> so again, just starting in the corner and lifting it up. Uh-oh, see? I've seemed to make two lines. And now we're going to use our friend the Q-tip. We're just going to erase that bottom line and start with the top one again. <laughs> So you're going to start and really just by closing your eye, the tip of your eyeliner should reach your skin just enough. Once you have that baseline that you like, you want to connect the line on your lid and the line for your wing together. I like the shape of my wing, so I'm going to try not to touch it very much more because once you start to overthink it, things get messier. So I'm just going to go over it one last time to make it a little bit more defined and darker. Okay, I'm happy with it, and now the challenging part is trying to match it on the other side and get it symmetrical with the other one so you don't have one droopy eye and one lifted eye. I have achieved an eyeliner that I am happy with, so it's time to move on to the eyebrows. The first thing you wanna do with your eyebrows is just brush them out, make sure they're combed to the shape that you would like them to be. Eyebrows go with era. If it's in the early 1900s, 1920s, 30s. You want a much thinner brow than you would get today where everything is very thick and full. If you're working with wigs, you wanna to talk to your director and see if they want your eyebrows to match your wig color. If not, a basic rule is just a few shades darker than your hair. I personally like to use an eyeshadow for my eyebrows because there's a lot more color choices when it comes to eyeshadow for your brows than there is brow products themselves. And truth be told, they're pretty much the same thing. I'm gonna use two colors for my eyebrows. For anything closer to my nose, right here where it starts to get lighter, I'm going to use this very almost green toned brown and then for the middle of my brows down to the tail I'm going to use a darker brown I'm going to use this color but I'm going to use very little of it so it's not too dark you don't want your eyebrows to look like blocks on your face I like to start by lining underneath my brow with the color that I'm going to use for that section so oops that was a little dark that's why you have fingers to fix your mistakes. Just line right underneath the area. And then just take very little and do little lines and flick up your brow. Almost to mimic hairs. What hair would do. I'm gonna flick it up. And then once you have that, you can Decide if you want to go darker or not. I'm going to go a little bit darker and just add a few more. And then again, I'm going to go in with that darker brown and go from here to here. And I'm going to line the bottom of my brow with the color that I'm using and then just flick from there. Okay, I'm happy with the shape, and I'm just going to do the same exact thing on the other side. And then the same thing with the dark brown on the outer corner. When you're doing your brows, a lot of people have gaps in their brows. I know I do. So you just want to use the color to fill in any of those gaps. We have done our eyeshadow, eyeliner, and eyebrows, and now it's time to move on to mascara and lashes. So 
typically in your day-to-day -day makeup you want your lashes to look longer and you want them to look full but because on stage you are wearing false lashes most of the time the look of your natural eyelashes isn't super important you just want them to be thick and dark so it looks like you have a good lash on your eye and it just adds darkness to your face so any mascara will do just put a lot on A good trick with mascara is starting at the root of your eye lash and then just shimmer, shimmying the brush up. That makes a lot more product to get on your actual lash instead of clinging to the tip of it. And again, it's okay if you get a little bit on your eyelid. I do it all the time. You can take it off with a little Q-tip or it'll just get covered by the big eyelashes anyway. So don't stress too much about it. Now do the same on the other eye. Bottom mascara is up to your discretion. I like to do it because it makes my eyes look a little bit bigger. But if you don't want to, that's fine too. It's a little bit tricky and you probably want to use a waterproof mascara because it is so close to under your eye, it might drag down when you start to sweat. Just lightly, excuse my mascara face, everyone has one. Just like that. Again, on the other side. And you want to focus it more on the outside of your lash. Even on top, just follow the shape of the winged liner you did and just drag your lashes out that way and it'll make your eyes look a little bit bigger. Now that we're done with mascara, you want to move on to eyelashes. A lot of the time when you're a little bit older, you want to use a bigger eyelash and a thicker one, kind of like these. These are nice and thick and you won't be able to see your real lashes at all once you have these on. Or you could go in something a little bit lighter. These are still pretty thick, but they're just a little bit lighter and look a little bit more natural. I would use this if you're doing maybe a straight play and you're very close to the audience. This would look much better than a thick lash like this would. So I'm going to use a lash glue that has a brush on the end of it. I think it makes it a lot cleaner, but they also have it in a squirty tube and I find those a little bit more complicated, but they do stick a little bit better because the glue's a little thicker. What you wanna do is you wanna take the tip of your brush or your finger, whatever you're using to paint the glue on the spine of the lash, you just want to take it, make sure you have a good amount of glue on the brush, and then just paint right over the lash line. I like to focus thicker clumps of glue on the two ends because when you start to sweat or your eyes water, the two edges are what is going to lift first. So once that's painted, you wanna give it a second. It goes on blue for white lash glue. You could also go in with a black lash glue. I find that a little bit more difficult because if you mess up or it sticks to another part of your face on accident, you're gonna have a big black line and this is clear so it's a little bit more forgiving when it comes to messing up. But the trick is it goes on blue and when it turns a little bit more clear and white, that's when you wanna put it on your eye. You wanna get it a little tacky so it sticks right away and doesn't flop around your eyelid. I like to blow on it to speed up the process or just wave it around, either one. Once you have your eyelash tacky enough, you wanna put it right almost on your eyelash but because you have black eyeliner on, if you go a little bit above it, it won't matter. But you just wanna put it right on top of your eyeliner, right on top of your eyelash. 
I like to focus the bigger part of my lash on the outer corner again. And I find it easier if you use tweezers or some eyelashes come with an applicator. Once you put it on your eye initially, I like to take the inner corner with a tweezer and just stick it to the inner corner of my eyelash. That one went on pretty easy. I'm proud of that, but sometimes they can be a little tricky and it might take you four or five times to put them on. It's okay. Relax. Take a deep breath. Try again. It will go on. That one is on. I am happy with it. I'm just going to do the same thing on the next eye. And again, just blow on it until it gets a little bit tacky. And then just grab the inner corner. Now I have my eyelashes on and a tip, if you tend to have eyes that water a lot, you want to put your eyeliner all the way to the inner corner or where your lash would be because once you have that darkness underneath the lash, you won't be able to tell if it's lifting as much as you would if it's just against your skin color. So now I have my whole face done except for the lips. I'm going to use a red lip, but again, this depends on your show and the time period of your show. There's pink, nude, brown. I'm going to use red because it's the most basic. No matter what color I'm using on my lips, I like to use a nude lip liner. Lip liner just lines the very edge of your lip and creates a shape, and it's almost like coloring in the lines. It gives you a little bit of direction. So. If you have smaller lips, you can also overline your lips and make them look a little bit bigger if you want that, but you don't need to. Just follow the natural line of your lip, and I can't talk while I'm doing this or else I'll mess up. So now I'm done lining my lips, and I'm just going to fill in everything with my red lipstick. Rub them together, make sure it's nice and evenly coated. And for stage makeup, I like to use a liquid lipstick because it dries down and won't transfer. If you're doing a costume change and need to lift something over your head, you don't want lipstick being traced all the way up your face or all over the costume. That would not be good. But if you don't have a liquid lipstick, a good trick is if your lipstick is shiny or glossy, you want to put it on, leave it on, let it set in for a second, and then take a tissue, fold it in half, and just put it right here and blot like this. And that'll take the first top layers of lipstick off, but leave the color and almost stain your lips, but it won't transfer on anything. Okay, so now my full face is almost done, but once I have my lipstick and my lashes on, it can make your skin look like it needs a little bit of touching up and brightness back into it. Once, when you have nothing on your eye or your lip, things look a little bit darker, but once you add it on, they could use some more. So I'm gonna go back in with the blush and add blush and maybe darken up my contour a little bit. All right, it looks like I added a little bit more color into my face. And now I'm just gonna go in and darken up that contour just a little bit using that same cool brown tone. I am now satisfied with how I look, but the final step of your makeup should be going out on stage and looking at it under the lights to make sure that you won't be washed out on stage. Now we are out on stage and it is time to check our makeup, see if we need to add any blush or contour. I think I'm looking pretty good. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you were able to learn something new and make sure to look out for a few more videos coming from me. Bye.